Today we're going to be combining a couple different skills that you've learned from previous videos. So you have learned already how to convert from grams of a substance to moles of a substance using that substance's molar mass, which tells us how much one mole weighs. It's the information that the molar mass gives us is how many grams of that substance is equivalent to one mole. So that allows us to convert between grams and moles of the same thing. And you've learned how to use the coefficient ratio or the mole ratio for a balanced reaction to convert from moles of one substance to moles of a different substance. So today we're going to be combining those two ideas together, combining the use of molar masses with mole ratios to allow us to ultimately convert between masses of two different substances. So we can convert from grams of one thing to grams of another by combining these two ideas. But it's always sort of a stepwise process where we have to go from grams of something to moles of that same thing to moles of a different thing to grams of that thing. We can't in a single conversion factor go from grams of one to grams of the other. So we kind of have to take this multi-step approach. But it's just using ideas you've already worked with and a little dimensional analysis to get us there. So our first example for today asks in this reaction, how many grams of silver are produced when one mole, sorry, one gram of copper reacts? So we are asked how many grams of silver are going to be produced when a certain mass of copper undergoes reaction. So we're looking to go from mass of copper, which we know, to mass of silver, which we don't. So along the way, we're going to take grams of copper and convert it into moles of copper using the molar mass of that substance, and then moles of copper to moles of silver using the coefficient ratio, just like you did in the last video, and then moles of silver to grams of silver, going back to the molar mass, but now using the molar mass of silver. So we can write this out as long as we pay attention to our dimensional analysis to where our units are um, and use these ideas to solve this. So we're looking for the amount of silver that forms when one gram of copper reacts. So that's the mass that we're starting with. That's the grams of copper here. This is something that we know. Um, so to convert, our first step is to convert from grams of copper to moles of copper. And to do that, we're going to use the molar mass, which is 63.55 grams of copper is equivalent to one mole. So if we have grams of copper here, to convert to moles, we're going to want that unit to cancel out, which means that that's going to go on the bottom of our fraction. So the 63.55 grams of copper goes on the bottom. Oops. Copper, not carbon. There we go. So our grams of copper is going to cancel out. And then we're converting to moles of copper. So that is going on the top. Now, moles of copper is not where we want to stop, so we can keep going to get to moles of silver is going to be our next step. So now we've got moles of copper up here that we want to cancel out in our next conversion, which means that moles of copper needs to go on the bottom, and the new unit we're looking to get into in this step is moles of silver, so that goes on the top. So then filling in our ratio is just coming from our coefficients, that one mole of copper is equal to two moles of silver in this reaction, that one copper here reacts to produce two silver, So we can fill in that ratio. And then we're still not quite done. We have reached moles of silver, but our last step 
is to get to grams of silver. So we're going to use the molar mass. Now, once again, we have this unit on top, which is where we've currently made it to. So we've currently, if we just stopped and did the math here, we would end up with an answer in moles of silver. And we want that to cancel out to end up in grams of silver. So using our molar mass here, our one mole of silver is going to go on the bottom so that that will cancel. And then our molar mass of silver, which is 107.87 grams, is going to go on the top. So now this is the unit that we wanted to get to. So at this point, we're done. And if we do out all of this math, we will find that we form 3.39 grams of silver when all is said and done. So, um, this little kind of flow chart here can be really helpful. Um, the generic version of it was up at the top. Um, but this little flow chart can kind of be helpful because you always have to move it, move along it step by step. You can't jump from one point to another. If you want to get from grams of A to moles of B, you have to go through moles of A first. So you have to always move along this in a stepwise fashion, but you can start and end anywhere along it. So if you're given moles of one substance and you want to find mass of another, you just start from this block and okay, so to go from moles of this thing to moles of a different thing, I need my coefficient ratio. And then to go from moles of that to mass, I need my molar mass. So you can kind of start and stop anywhere along it, um, but you always have to, to move in a straight line back and forth. You can't just kind of jump around however you feel like, since each step is a conversion factor. <clears throat> so then a uh, similar example kind of goes in the opposite direction, um, but mathematically the same. This first one we were asked how much product would be produced from a given amount of reactant. This one as asking us how much reactant we need to produce a particular amount of product, specifically how many grams of acetylene, which is C2H2 right here, must react in order to produce five grams of carbon dioxide. So um, we can move along our flow chart here in a similar way. We know the mass of carbon dioxide that we're looking to produce. We can convert that to moles of carbon dioxide using the molar mass of CO2. We can convert that moles of CO2 into moles of acetylene using the coefficient ratio from the reaction. And then we can convert moles of acetylene to grams of acetylene using its molar mass. So if we do that, we know that we're looking to produce five moles of CO2. I just did that wrong. Let's scratch that. Also, if you would like to try this on your own, feel free to pause here. Um, so we know we're starting with five grams of CO2. So the first thing we want to do is cancel this unit out. So in our molar mass, the grams portion is going to go on the bottom. So 44.01 grams of CO2 is equivalent to one mole. So by dimensional analysis, we know that the grams portion we want to go on the bottom so that that unit will cancel out. And so far, we have converted into moles of CO2. So we are here. Next thing we want to do is convert from moles of CO2 to moles of the other thing that we are interested in, which is acetylene, using the coefficient ratio. So if we look at our reaction, we see that four moles of CO2 are produced when two moles of acetylene react. So we can use this conversion factor that four moles of CO2 in this reaction is equivalent to two moles of C2H2. We want 
moles of CO2 to cancel. So that's going to go on the bottom. Moles of acetylene is the new unit we're converting into at this step. So that will go on the top. So if we stopped here, we have reached moles of C2H2. If we did the math, that's what the answer we would get. But we were asked for how many grams. So our last step is going to be, once again, to use a molar mass, this time the molar mass of acetylene, to do our final conversion. So we have moles of C2H2 currently that we need to cancel out. So that is going to go on the bottom. And the grams is the new unit that we're looking to end up in. Is going to go on the top. So our moles down the bottom will cancel our moles from over here. And then our grams of C2H2 is the unit we were looking to end up in. So we don't want to cancel that out. We want to leave it just as it is. And you should find about 1.48 grams of acetylene.